I would like to give a presentation now on understanding graphs in Vilfredo. If you go around in Vilfredo, you will find graphs, and understanding them is extremely important to understand what's going on in, in Vilfredo and how to interact better with the other people with which you are discussing. So let's start with some of the most simple graphs. This one is one of the standard graphs with which we start, and it's from a question that, we, that I use very often when I give a talk. How should we handle the wall of text problem? In this graph, there are four people who voted and about 16 proposals. Now, as you can see, each box represents a proposal. Sometimes a box will, rep a box will represent two different proposals, and each egg down here represent a person. A line, a blue line from a person, from an egg to a box, represent what that person has voted. So from this we can see that Batokia has voted for 1190, whereas Ed Pastore has voted for 1181 and 1180. Now, there are also those black lines, and a black line represents a domination. So we say that a proposal dominates another proposal if everybody from the second proposal votes also for the first proposal. So, for example, 1179 dominates 1186 because everybody who votes for 1186 also votes for 1179. Which means that we do not have to, to draw the lines that represent all those extra people that voted for those other proposals. Let's make a simple example. 1188 has been voted by Owen Ambor. Now, 1183 has been voted by Batokia but also dominates 1188. So we know that anybody who voted for 1188 also voted for 1183. So we know that Owen Ambor has voted also for 1183, even though there is no blue line. We do not draw the blue line, because if not it would be very complex to understand the graph, as there would be so many lines. Similarly, 1179 has been voted by everybody who voted for 1186 and 1183, which means Batokia plus the people who voted for 1188, 1181, which means Batokia, Owen and Ed Pastore, and, and so on. If more than one proposal are in the same box, it means that exactly the same people have voted for those proposals so the system tends to connect them together. Similarly, if a proposal has not been voted by anything, it will be shown down here, and although theoretically it is dominated by everything else, to try to, to put less connection, we just do not show those arrows. Here it doesn't really make a lot of difference, but there are other graphs where this really makes a, a big difference. So, this is the basic idea of what a graph represents. The blue boxes represent the Pareto front, that is, the proposal that are not dominated by anything. So there is no, if you have a, a box that is blue, there never will be a black line going upward. Now let's look at another graph, which is this one. This is a little bit more complex. We zoom it out a little bit. And, and now over here we have about eight people voting. Now, you also can see a few things. First of all, in this case, we have a more complex uh, hierarchical relation about who voted for what. So, 1182 is dominated by 1281, which is dominated by 1275, which is dominated by 1288, which is finally dominated by 1268, which is not dominated by anything, so it is in the Pareto front. Now, the height in this graph represents the number of votes that a proposal has received. So 1288 has received less votes than 1268 and has received more votes than 1275. And notice that 1284 has received less votes than 1288, but 1284 is in the Pareto front and 1288 is not in the Pareto front. Why is it so? Because 1284 is not dominated by anything, whereas 1288 is dominated by something. 
So if we take it off, everybody who voted for it are still going to be happy because they also voted for 1268. Something else that you can see over here is a blue line going from one person to another person. What does this mean? This means that this person, Owen, has voted in a certain way and he has voted exactly in the same way as a flywheel. Similarly, Ford has voted for 1284 plus he has voted for 1286 and 1285. We could make a connection between Ford and those proposals over here, but it is just easier to make a connection over here. This is important because it slowly starts to cluster also people between them, so that if people start to vote in similar way, you can actually start to see it. Now, as you have understood, there are several ways in which the graph can be represented, and this is the reason why we, we have a picture that represent all the possible ways in which you can represent a graph and then you can just pull out one of those graphs and look at it. You normally uh, achieve this picture by going to the cli by clicking on all graph on the lower side whereas if you click on full sides you will see the, the picture you are in into a, into a whole tab. So what are those possible different ways of looking at a graph? Now, first of all, we can look at two different possibilities. We can see all the, all the proposals that have been presented and that have been voted, or just the Pareto front. So the first three will represent all the proposals, and the, the first nine, and the next nine will represent all, only the Pareto front. Now, the first line looks at all the proposals and puts them in a line. So if we look at this, at this one over here, which has all the proposals all in a line and all the voters all in a line, we can see how difficult it is to understand what is really going on. And this is why we actually try to introduce a structure in the graph. So the second possibility is to look at the proposal and see them by number of votes that they have received. And this is the second line. So in this case, we can see this is the same graph as before, but now the proposal, the height of the proposal is given by number of votes that they have received. And now it's you starting to see what is the structure and how is it that some proposal dominate other proposal while other proposal are, are discarded? Another option is to look at the hierarchical structure that is imposed by the domination and use this to understand what, where should a proposal be. So on the first line in this case, we will find all the proposal in the Pareto front. On the second line, all the proposal that are only dominated but proposal in the, in the Pareto front. On the third line, only proposal that are at least dominated by one proposal in the second, in the second line plus some proposal in the Pareto front. And so on as the chain goes down. And last of everything, of course, are proposals that have not been voted by anyone. The same thing happens when we are looking only for a proposal in the Pareto front. Now we have the first line over here, which is all the proposal in line, then all the proposal by number of votes. So now we see that among the proposal in the Pareto front, not all have been voted the same number of times. And then again, proposals in a hierarchical way. But proposal in a hierarchical way if we are only considering a proposal in the Pareto front, does really not make any sense because they are all already on a line. The proposal in the Pareto front are all in the top level of the hierarchy. So the, the first line and the third line from this point of view will be equal. Now if we actually look now if we actually look at, at the column, 
we have the first column which represent all the per all the people in a line the second column which represent all the people in a hierarchical way hierarchical not respect of how much they are worth or something like that but hierarchical respect of how they have voted so how often did a, a person vote in a similar way as another person and on the third column we have people height depending on how many proposals they have voted so if we look at this at this graph over here we can see for example that flywheel only voted for two proposal whereas ford voted for three proposal and ed pastore voted for six proposals and Batokia voted for even more proposals so i suppose seven and so on and as you go and as you go down you will actually find people who are uh, more relaxed and accept more things and as you go up you find people who are more strict and uh, and require and has a more uh, higher requirements from something for them to pass now if we participate in a proposal and uh, in in a question and finally we reach uh, a consensus this is how a consensus is shown it's not anymore blue it is yellow and is a single proposal which is yellow so in this case proposal 1332 is uh, has reached consensus and everybody voted for this one now let's look at another graph this one was about uh, different voting system to elect the parliament in italy among my friends and here was how people voted now notice how those three people, Cristallo, Carlito and Zanna, voted for two proposals on the side and all those other people voted for other proposals on the other side and really there isn't much connection between them. Now if we start to take away the, the non-Pareto front proposal, we reach another graph which is this one. Now you see how this one is even simpler in a sense and here you can see even better the division between those three people on one side and everybody else on the other. And in a sense you can see over here how 2185 really has the consensus of, has the support of eight different people whereas the other have a much smaller support. And you can see this division among the people. Now this division seems to be random but it is not random at all in fact those three people over here they are looking for a proportional way of voting for the parliament whereas the people over here are vote are looking for a system like the french system or the english english system in italian it's called a, a un sistema maggioritario whereas each local area will elect one representative and so the result is less proportional but it gives a higher possibility to govern for people. Now the interesting thing over here is that the graph was able to show a semantic division among the proposal even though there was nothing that gave semantic information to the graph. It was just working on the mathematics. And by the way, you might wonder why are we not using this kind of system and voting system for a big group of people? Well, this is the result, this is the reason. This was a question where we had 33 people voting and, uh, well, we just zoomed into one of those proposals and as you can see, is a little bit difficult to understand even if we zoom out completely. This is the maximum that Google Chrome permits us and it's pretty much impossible to understand. So now when you go around and you see those graphs, you know how to interpret them. After you voted, normally the system will present you with a graph of how other people have voted asking you to change your vote and now you can start to understand how people voted and why, and how by changing your vote you can affect the Pareto Front. Thank you very much.